Hey guys, so today we are creating a doll cake. I got to work with the good people over at Genius Kitchen. I emailed them a lot over the weekend. Now because of Genius Kitchen, we get to turn Rihanna's bomb Pope outfit into this beautiful doll cake. I love this dress, I love all the details, I love Rihanna, so let's get started. Now the theme of this year's Met Gala was heavenly bodies and the Catholic imagination. Basically how Catholicism has affected fashion. I hope you guys watched the rivals. I was shook. I was like, no, like in the Bible. Like I was shook it. On the third day he was shook it. There were so many amazing dresses and Genius Kitchen and I were trying to figure out which dress to do. Rihanna went big so we had to go big as well. Let's create this cake. I'm using two batches of vanilla cake mix. I'm just using a box cake but if you're fancy you can make an original recipe. I just poured my cake into my doll cake pan and baked it at the temperature and time on the box. Once it's baked and had time to cool I leveled off the top and then I pulled out the heating rod. Then with a cake board underneath, I flipped over my cake. This is gonna be the dress and the skirt of our doll cake. Now I'm gonna cut my cake into three layers. And then with a cookie cutter, I'm just gonna cut a hole in the middle of each of my layers. Just so that there's enough room for my doll to stand in. I'm gonna add some buttercream into the middle of each layer of cake. This is a really simple buttercream recipe. It's just one part butter to two parts powdered sugar. I just stick to two ingredients and then get awesome results. Now after I finished filling the inside with buttercream, I gave this baby a crumb coat. I'm not gonna give this a full coat of buttercream because I use a lot of fondant to create the fabric on the doll cake. And I consider that a layer of icing because it is an icing, it's like a moldable icing. It's kind of like a play doughable icing. On the front of the dress, Rihanna's legs are showing and I wanted to make sure that you could see them on the cake. So I took my sidekick paring knife and I just cut a little bit of the front of the cake so that when you place the doll in the middle of the cake, a little bit of her legs will be exposed. I'm gonna give this area a crumb coat and then I'm gonna place this into the fridge for about two hours to set. For this cake, I started creating it as soon as the red carpet finished. The idea was to have a finished product by the next morning. This was an all-nighter, you guys. I uh, was delirious by the end. As soon as we decided on the Rihanna dress, I went to the store to buy the doll, to buy fondant, to buy all the things that I would need to create this doll cake. And when I got home, the thing that I realized I had to create first was the Pope hat. So I took some white fondant and I added some CMC to it so it would stiffen up a little bit. And I just rolled it out probably about a fifth of an inch thick and I just placed it onto a cake board and let it set for about two hours. That way the top layer of fondant would crust and I could get really nice edges for the pop hat. Then I went to work on my Barbie. Now to create this cake, I needed the Barbie to be two things. I needed it to have Rihanna's skin tone and I needed it to be bald. I thought this was gonna be impossible. I don't think I've ever seen a bald Barbie. Barbie, but I was able to find one. Barbie fashionista number 82. The only problem with this Barbie was the small amount of hair that she did have was blonde. So I decided to do what all of my chola girlfriends used to do in high school with their eyebrows. I just filled it in with a sharpie. <laughs> Just covered all of her hair in black sharpie. I even replicated the sideburns so that it would look exactly like Rihanna's style. I've never done this before, but I guess there's like, there's a first time for everything. Now back to the cake. Now I rolled out a very large piece of white fondant and I'm gonna cover the entire cake with it. I cut it into a not so perfect circle with a pizza cutter and just draped it over the entire cake. Now with most cakes, you want to smoothen out the edges, but with this cake, we're actually going to enhance all of the folds that are created on the side. That way, the bottom of the cake will look like moving fabric on a dress. Now I want this doll cake to kind of look like she's spinning, so I'm making sure that all the fabric is moving towards the right. But later on, it'll give this really nice illusion of movement. Using some sculpting tools, I'm just going to add some defining lines to start to give that illusion of movement. So it looks like it's flowing. That's the whole idea. I pushed the fun down in the middle of the cake with my fingers and then I placed in my Barbie doll. And using some white fondant and an X-Acto knife, I cut out the top of the dress and made sure that the bottom would leave enough room that it would reveal some of her legs. She also has two like fabric details on the side of the dress. Now to stick all of these pieces together, I'm using magic sauce. And if you don't know what magic sauce is, 
It's vodka or water. All the alcohol in the vodka evaporates, but whenever I say vodka in a video, everyone just thinks that there's like a whole bunch of nine-year-olds running around drunk from eating a cake. <laughs> so that's why I say magic sauce. Now I wanted to fill the gap between the doll and the rest of the cake, so I'm adding a little bit of fondant in between the doll and the cake, and then just blending it with a little bit of vodka and some sculpting tools, as well as my hands. After I finished this, I placed it into the fridge for about 30 minutes and I started to work on my Pope hat again. Usually when I create doll cakes, I don't use any patterns. I just cut the fondant as I'm creating the doll. But with the Pope hat, I wanted to make sure that I got all the dimensions right. So I actually created a template and just cut it out using a pizza cutter and an X-Acto knife. After that, I just connected the two edges together at the back. And voila, look at that. If I wasn't able to recreate this pull pad, this cake would have been a bust. So I was ecstatic that I was able to do it. I never thought I'd create a pull pad and I never thought that I'd create a pull pad for a doll cake and I did. If you want to see more of my doll cakes, there's an entire playlist for you to gawk at and drool over. I love my designs and then there's like some designs that I look back at and I'm like, oh, that's kind of trash. <laughs> now I rolled out some more white fondant and I'm just going to cut it into a very long sail shape. I'm cutting this long enough so that it'll go from her waist to the bottom of the cake at a 90 degree angle. So it's a lot longer than if it were going straight up and down. Now I'm going to attach this to my cake with magic sauce at again a 90 degree angle um, and I'm just going to use my sculpting tools to give the fabric a little bit more flow. Now with the front panel of fondant, because I'm placing it at a 90 degree angle, it'll look like the front of the dress is shorter but because the fabric is moving you don't actually see the rest of her legs. It's an illusion you guys because I'm manipulating what you see because I'm a liar. <laughs> and there's so much about this dress that I love, but my favorite part about this dress, besides pulp hat, is that chunky jacket that she's wearing. Now to create this, I'm wrapping some white fondant around her arms, and I'm just scrunching it together to make it look oversized. I'm gonna repeat that process with the other arm. You don't have to be too careful with this because the more folds, the better it looks. And I'm gonna wrap more fondant around the top to create the collar of the jacket. And I'm making it uneven so that the left side is larger and on the shoulder while the other side is smaller and off the shoulder. You see, this is the kind of look that we're going for. <laughs> Once I finished this jacket, I was done with all of my fondant work. Now it's time to add some luster dust. So I mixed some silver luster dust with a little bit of vodka. And using a paintbrush, I just started to dab on the luster. I love luster dust. It like upgrades all the cakes you put it on. It looks so fancy. Now while the luster and vodka was still sort of tacky, I added some shimmer sprinkles. Now the entire gown is embroidered. Embroidered? With embroidery? Now this entire gown is covered in embroidery. Embellished? Embellishments? Uh, I don't think I've ever used these words in a sentence before. <laughs> now this entire dress was like covered in like sequins and beading. There were some em embellishments and embroidery <laughs> but because we're working on such a small scale the way I decided to go about this was by using some shimmer sprinkles the light hits it at different angles and it gives it that embroidered sort of texture and look I let this set for about 10 minutes and then I took a paintbrush and just started to brush off all of the excess shimmer this shimmer got everywhere it was all over my floor on my clothes in my hair and I was wearing a hat so I don't even know how that happened after I cleaned my mess up, I started adding some more embroidery details. I'm using royal icing and a Wilton's number no. 3 round tip, as well as a Wilton's star tip. I'm just adding details, trying to match the pattern on the dress as much as possible. But it was really hard. I was working with a lot of pictures and the fabric looks different from different angles, so... I kind of just made up the pattern as I was creating the gown. Now when it comes to detail work, I'm very patient, but with this I was rushing a lot. You know, I sort of meased out all of my time and my doll cake was supposed to be done at 2 a.m. It was 3.30 when I started doing all of the beading work. I wanted to cry. <laughs> I was like, I should have been editing already and I was just like... <laughs> Hurry, hurry. <laughs> yeah, I panicked a little bit, but then I just took like a spoonful of Nutella and had a little chocolate break. And then I was good to go. 
Now when I was finished with the white detail, I added some black detail using a Wilton star tip. And I just scattered these stars all over the dress to kind of mimic the pattern that was on the dress that she was wearing. Now the last thing that I had to do for the cake was decorate the Pope hat. I repeated the luster dust and the shimmer sprinkle process and I just used the same tips to create the pattern that's on the Pope hat that she's wearing. I took a lot more time on the Pope hat because I was like, this needs to be glorious. And on the third day, it was miraculous. When I was finished, I placed my Pope hat onto my doll and voila, my Met Gala Rihanna doll cake was complete. This looks so sick. You know, I love all the details. I love that I was able to get all the proportions of the jacket right. Everything that was on her actual dress is here in miniature for our Thank you, thank you, thank you to Genius Kitchen for asking me to do this. It was so cool. I'll leave awesome links to their YouTube channel and all their social media so you can head over and send them love. And they saw my Infinity Gauntlet and that led to my doll cakes and they were like, yo, we need to work with this boy. I think we're going to be working on a lot more projects together. And I'm curious, did you watch all of the rivals for the Met Gala? Um, and who do you think had the best dress? I like Blake Lively's, I like Cardi B's. Frances McDormand's reminded me of like the Alexander McQueen, you know, butterfly sculpture thing that he created. Uh, I like that too. There are so many great dresses, but Rihanna's just took the cake for me. Make sure you smash that like button and let me know in the comments what character or person you'd like me to turn into a doll cake next. Lady Gaga would be perfect for this, man. That meat, what if I made the meat dress? What? I love you guys. I will see you very soon. Bye.